Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And this is video number two, and it's going to be really, really short. I just didn't want to combine them because combined, it would have been too long to do it into one. And do you remember yesterday in the video when I first opened it up, I talked about the Japanese uh, financial giant SBI launching the CFDs. Well, it uh, it became official about two hours ago, and it's going to be done with Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP. And in that announcement, it'll officially start on August 31st, 2020. And what's so funny about this is Mr. Kitao of SBI announced that this was going to come last January, and he did exactly what he did with SBI VC Trade. He makes his announcement, and yet when he says he's going to do something, he really does do it. But sometimes he does it in what we call in Japan in the just at the last moment, giddy giddy. So he did it. Uh, just by the last day of August, which he promised back in January, he would do it by August. <laughs> so this is not a custody uh, of of XRP at all. This is betting, betting. Yeah, it's basically betting. You're just guessing or, you know, putting out a contract for the price, whether it's going to go up or it's going to go down. But you'll be able to do it 24 days, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And the maximum open position that you can do for Bitcoin is 500 in the case of BTC paired with that Japanese yen. So this is going to occur on the FX trade site. And, you know, I do want to tell you that for people who say that this is just uh, taking a contract for price. Yeah, but you are introducing XRP, the digital asset into a whole new ecosystem that would probably have never even heard of this digital asset before. So the possibilities of the um, exposure is seriously, seriously positive. Uh, when you have this over-the-counter crypto asset margin trading, it's based on a very small amount of margin required to actually get into that transaction, to actually make that contract. So you can make a lot of money, <laughs> but at the same time, you can lose a lot of money. <laughs> That's what it says here. Yeah, it's very high risk. I think it's going to be popular. There are people who just love this kind of trading. And it is uh, good to see that XRP is going to get that exposure here in Japan. So um, I'm going to just take a little liberty here. And I want you to hear how I responded to Grasshopper, who I have been <laughs> giving uh I've been ex extending my patience for months on months <laughs> with the comments that come. And it's okay. I, I'm, I'm totally okay with people who have a little bit of angst. But in this case, this angst is not really justified. And uh, just allow me to share my answer. So Grasshopper says, let's talk SBI. After all they're promoting of XRP, they come up with a CFD. Basically, you bet on the price of XRP going up or down and don't hold physical XRP at any point. Point. Yes, correct. Uh, these guys do a lot of talking for over three years, and now they are just taking enrollments to trade XRP CFDs, overhyped BS. Let me just tell you what I answered here, because I think people sometimes get a little bit laser focused on, on, on not liking somebody. <laughs> they just can't see the big picture. So let me just nudge everyone's memory. SBI is RippleNet Live in Vietnam and Thailand. Laying down the rails first, everyone can totally agree, is the most important step first before you can introduce ODL. They have also uh, an XRP weighted fund launching this summer. That's actual custody of XRP. They have also paid out the SBI holdings shareholders with a benefit in XRP. Can you imagine? It's never been done before. And this is, again, introducing the digital asset XRP to a whole new ecosystem of people who are in traditional stocks who just 
I'll bet you 75% have never even heard of XRP. And in order to um, actually redeem that benefit, you have to open up an SBI VC trade account. So it really has really made the SBI VC trade site profitable, which um, that prof profit was showed in the last quarterly report. And then there are more than 30 banks that have made an investment into MoneyTap. MoneyTap is the mobile app which runs on Ripple. Yes, it's only domestic right now, but this is going to go into the uh, international space. It's been announced. I, you know, you have to understand that SBI is a public company, and Mr. Kikitao can't just say stuff like a private company can. <laughs> when you're when you're public, you really need to you really need to deliver on what you say. I mean, you have a huge responsibility to the shareholders. He also um, formed the R3 SBI Japan, and they built Corda Settler, which uses XRP. That was a first. Also, there's a new e-gaming company that he has started, and the players' salaries are going to be paid out in portion by XRP. They also, uh, for an undisclosed amount, which means a big amount, they backed one of the newest exchanges here in Japan called FX Coin, and they are moving forward with XRP ODL. That has been announced. And being the largest outside shareholder that has contributed to the last round of funding of Ripple made them the second most valuable tech company in the United States. <laughs> That's just for starters. I, you know, and I, I didn't even talk about what his plans are for XRP in the Osaka 2025 um, event that's coming. So, you know, this in, in, and there will be a lot of other things to follow. In fact, I'm seriously expecting uh, a pretty good announcement from SBI uh, this year uh, at Swell. I really am. So anyway, I think they have done more than anyone except for Ripple and Spring have done for XRP. I just choose to see that the glass is half full, not half empty. All right. I have a question for you. Were you surprised that gold and Bitcoin dropped in tandem together after the Federal Reserve the Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell said that the U.S. will allow inflation to rise above 2% with no interest rate adjustment. I think that some of you might have been surprised because we are constantly fed over and over by media like Barron's, Forbes, Cointelegraph, and there are the investor types, like even billionaire Paul Tudor recently said, and all the analysts from around the world, including now even CNBC is on board, talking about how Bitcoin is different. Bitcoin is a store of gold or a, uh, a store of uh, value. That Bitcoin is is going to be that hedge. And as you see, it's always talking about it's the hedge against inflation. Well, September 3rd, 2019, Bitcoin was $10,625. And today it's 11300 and some. So it's only up about $700 in the last year, which is why I'm still not convinced it's a hedge. Now, this is not a dissing of BTC at all. This is a video that is actually going to tell you something that's very positive from a couple of announcements that have come through in the last 24 hours. I am a huge Bitcoin supporter because I understand the reality that it has such great potential to really kickstart this market. And with that kickstart will come a bigger market cap and it'll also um, bring along nearly, nearly, nearly all the projects that have some utility. So today, the Winklevoss twins, they made an ultimate case for a $500,000 Bitcoin. And this price is because it has that potential hedge against inflation, as this blog writes, pointing out that uh, 
Tyler here thinks that gold and oil and the US dollar have fundamental problems. And you know what? I don't disagree at all with his reasons that he gave. But also, there is a fundamental problem that Bitcoin has that might be holding it back. However, I think we're really close to solving that fundamental problem. And I want to tell you that as a person who has multiple projects since January 2014, I really want to see the case for Bitcoin hitting that price point and being a hedge, a reality. And here's what's happening. So Fidelity, they made a big announcement. They are going to do a dedicated fund for Bitcoin. And they are they are going to bring in some serious institutional investors because there is a minimum $100,000 investment in order to get involved. When we look at the results that Cambridge University did, the US, the US only has about a 6% share of the hash rate. And I think this is one of the fundamental problems, but I think this is one that's going to be changing soon. Right now, Bitcoin is very vulnerable. And it's because so much of the mining power is coming from China. And with Fidelity, which has some very powerful investors behind in terms of, you know, investing their money in these assets that are managed by Fidelity. China has a chance, if it wants to, to really whack America's powerful behind the knees if they wanted to take a strategic move against America, because there's a lot of building hostility. And I think this is the one point that might be holding some people back because they really do have the power to do so. But there is the change that I think is coming. In the last 24 hours, Riot Blockchain, which is an American company, they announced that they are going to buy 5,000 more miners to achieve a very modest, I know, uh, achieve a 1.66% hash rate, but it's a start. Hang on, hang on. And also DCG, Digital Currency Group, this is uh, very silver. He is uh, behind a very <laughs> influential, influential uh, VC in the space. They are also a Ripple investor. I'm kind of surprised, but they are going to also invest $100 million into Bitcoin mining. And then we have SBI and GMO, two big financial giants, along with PayPal co-founder Peter Thiel. They're taking their miner business to Rockdale, Texas. And Peter aims to have a 30% share of that total hash rate by the end of 2021. Wow, Peter, I really hope you can do that. So the point is, is that will that $500,000 price really come to fruition? I don't know. I hope so. And I really do hope for everybody in this ecosystem that Bitcoin is crazy successful because it will have that opportunity to kickstart so many other projects. And should they really be able to take that mining power? Forget the controversial discussion about the use of energy. That's not my point in this particular video. I'm talking about making it safe for the institutional investors to get into this space so that we can't get whacked behind the knees. That's my point. So I do see again, the glass is half full not half empty. All right, everybody, we're jumping to some really beautiful photography that I found from a Japanese photographer that just has that eye. And I want to share it with you because it's so beautiful. This is Mount Fuji. It looks like it's from the Yamanashi side, which is kind of the Tokyo side, not the backside, which is Shizuoka, which is where that wasabi um, 
Kit Kat is from that I talked about in the last video. But look at this picture. I just think it's so beautiful. And this too is just wonderful. I think it's an old farmhouse. I don't know where it is, but for sure it's over a hundred years old. And I'm also pretty sure that it has a second level. These houses would store the uh, silkworms up on that level so that they, you know, it was a very, very lucrative business for creating uh, the beautiful silk textiles that were used for kimono. Anyway, I think this photograph is really lovely. And uh, the one that really caught my eye is this one here. We had a lightning storm on Saturday night, and this is the Tokyo Sky Tree Tower. And wow, what a powerful photograph. I love it. I just think this is a really magic moment. Lucky shot. All right, everybody. Yes, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.